Hey, what's up, y'all? It is Michael back with another episode of Community Voices. Um, today, we got a very, very special guest um, all the way from uh, Canada. We got um, big man at Purdue, Zach Eady. What's up, Zach? Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I guess it's uh, it's headed into uh, spring, summer, but you made the decision to run it back, right? Mm-hmm. I'm back to Purdue another year, so it should be fun. I, I love the campus, I love my teammates. So, yeah, congratulations on that, man. It's been fun, fun watching you. Um, you know, like I, you know, been reading, reading up on you, and um, you know, unlike a lot of international players, you kind of picked up basketball kind of later in life. What was it that kind of got you attracted to it and, and kept you in love with the game? Yeah, so obviously, I um, I was always pushed into basketball because I was always tall and everyone I was wasn't like I had a random growth spur I was always much pretty much tall than everyone and um a lot of people tried to tell me to play basketball but they kind of respected the fact um that I played baseball that I played hockey and I was pretty good at those two sports so they respected the fact that I like that and I really want to play basketball um but eventually I kind of some things happened now my, my parents wanted me to focus on one sport going into high school so I, I stopped playing hockey I started I kept only playing baseball and then in baseball, my arm kind of um, was giving me some shoulder problems. So I was, um, I don't know if I was really, I've always, I'd always wanted to play professional baseball, but I don't know if the, kind of, the dream kind of faded when I started getting the shoulder problems like that. Yeah. So I was looking for another sport to kind of start playing. And um, basketball was obviously the first one that was on my mind. One of my um, really good friends at the time, his dad took over um, just a local rec team. Nothing's crazy. I just I started playing. I really liked it. I learned that I really liked it. And I, because I had literally never touched a basketball before, like I've intentionally, oh, like I, I, I would, sometimes I would play like horse, sometimes I would play like just some fun games, but I wasn't never really played four on four, three on three, five on five, or anything like that. So learning the game was um, a big, it was a big curve for me, learning how to play, learning what to do. And um, it just really, Learning later in life, though, I think was really a good thing for me. I think it really helped um, make me unique in the sport, especially with make um, grow up some of my other skills that some people that only play basketball from when they're a little kid. Uh, sometimes they might miss out on some of the skills like hockey, I think really gave me a strong foundation. that gave me some good legs. Um, I think baseball really helped my hand-eye coordination, helped yeah. my, kind of like my touch at the end and stuff like that. That's really helped me a lot in basketball. So even though I hadn't only played those uh, even when I only played basketball for a few years I've kind of had a lot of sports that have helped me out in a lot of different unique ways that uh, I wouldn't be able to I wouldn't be able to have really unless I played those sports going up yeah and I mean there's the, the the doors were opened on the court right so but now you're in in a, a U.S. college what's that experience like it's really cool um obviously it's different uh being away from home, but I've been away from home for a while. This is me, my even though it's only my one of my third year in, in uh, Purdue, to my fifth year away from home now because uh, I went to eleven and twelve in high school uh, in America. So it's, I think it helped me a lot going getting through that curve. Kind of, uh, I went through it early, so when I hit my freshman year at Purdue, it really, it wasn't a big deal like it was for some of the other freshmen. Uh, I kind of knew how to live away from home, but. It's tough. I mean, I w- obviously, I wish if there was, I wish we, I could have just stayed in Toronto and played D1 ball, but that's not how it works. Um, yeah. that is what it is. You've uh, committed to the national team too, right? Mm-hmm. I'm doing um, Team Canada for the next three years, so that should be wow. fun. Yeah, congratulations. And, you know, I think that's um, it's a good perspective, and it's it's allowed you to have some international experience, you know, from – from Canada to the U.S. And, and playing on the national team as well, being able to experience all these things and, and different people and different cultures. And, um, you know, is there any experience out of that that, that you've taken away? Yeah, um, it's, it, it's just first off, it's just great to be able to travel the globe for free, really. Um, have yeah. to go to different countries on someone else's dime. So that's always cool. Um, get to visit. I went to um, Riga last year, last summer. I went to... Um, Columbia a few summers ago for a Basel of Borders thing. So just being able to travel the world, being able to um, see different cultures is really, is really cool. And then also, obviously, last year that, that um, U19 Cup really helped me um, 
kind of snowball my progress that I made from there into the off season uh, and then into the season. And um, just a great thing. I like it's, it's, be, it's great to be able to play basketball, really organized basketball with, with good competition during my off season. Yeah, that's great. Um, so, you know, it's AAPI month here in the US and I know it's Asian Heritage Month in Canada. Um, what is your connection to, um, uh, I guess, that culture? Yeah, it's um, it's definitely strong. It's definitely a, uh, identifying, identifying factor for me. I love it. Uh, I love being Chinese. I like how it makes me stand out. I like how uh, it makes me different from everyone else. Because especially if you look at basketball, there's really no one that's um, there's very few that are Chinese or Asian um, that are representing and playing at a, a high level of D1. Um, but it's really cool. I like it. It's uh, it's always been a big thing for me. Um, I've got my, I made sure to get my grandpa to give me a Chinese name. He, he didn't give me one at birth. I made sure to get him to get me one as I grew up. I yeah. got tattooed on me. So it's always, it's always going to be there, but um, it's really, it's really, really cool. I like, I love being Chinese. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, I think you kind of said it too. It, it's representing something that, you know, the kids can look up to and find a familiar face within, um, you know, community in, in its sport that, you know, most kids love to play and just kind of seeing a similar face. It's, you know, it's, it's, um, I'm sure there's a lot of kids out there and parents out there that are thankful to see you come on that national stage. I, I hope so. It's going to be, that'd be an honor. Yeah. Is, um, you know, is, is there any challenges that you faced or that your family faced um, that you can recall um, kind of growing up? Um. I didn't really get, I don't really get those, um, at least not to my face, I don't really get those remarks. Um, people obviously are kind of intimidated by me. My brother got it a little bit. I think my mom, when she was growing up, especially because Toronto was, not Toronto, but Canada and the world really was a different place when she was growing up. I think she got uh, a little tease for it. Uh, but personally, I haven't really ever felt like, like, um, I don't know, ex excluded because of my race. I've always kind of felt that I've kept at least good friends around me that never really, that never really saw it, honestly. Yeah, and I hope that's a, that's, that becomes more common, right? Like uh, not, not fighting the discrimination, but being able to teach and being able to like educate those, elevate like your experiences, your, your mom's experience, your brother's experience to those around us. Cause I, you know, I hope that people are more accepting of that, that message instead of trying to like fight the other way. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's great. I mean, cause there's always the, um, obviously the, the, the big diversity months like black history month, um, all those months. But it's great that Chinese people and Asian people have their own month too, um, to kind of shine light on some of the stuff, especially with this recent COVID thing and a lot of the discrimination that happened, especially early on with the COVID, um, is really, it's a great thing to have this month. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, just getting headed into this and um, kind of talking about this, uh, this charity that you're involved in. Um, ITK, I, you know, it's, it's in Canada. Um, it's an important piece of, of really the establishing culture of Canada. Can you talk to us a little about how you got involved with ITK and, and what they stand for? Yeah, so um, ever since I was a little kid, kind of uh, learning about the Aboriginal people in uh, grade seven and eight, I really, this was something I really wanted to do. I always told myself if I could, uh, I would try to donate to help these people out because really, it's really not right what we did to them. Mm -hmm. uh, we look back at the history and how we treated them and how we kind of kept up their land after they showed us kindness. Um, so it's always been kind of something that hasn't really sat very well with me. And it's always been something that really made it a goal of mine to try to help uh, any, any way I can. And um, this, this charity that I, that I found is great for it. Um, they, I think they have the largest Intuit um, like, uh, representation in Canada. They, have, uh, they represent 65,000 people and they are basically about kind of bringing awareness to them, making uh, try to make legal, like help them legally and um, help them like with their, uh, just basically with their rights and their, how they're treated within the legal system too. Uh, so I think that's really something that, that I really, really has, hits the um, nail on the head for me. That's kind of always what I wanted. I wanted just for them to be able to seek help, for them to be able to 
um, be treated equally and all that. Yeah, that's awesome. I think it's an important message and it's, you know, it's one that um, I hope we can, we can help you spread the word on, um, uh, create that education, that inspiration. And, um, you know, on behalf of uh, JD Finish Line, um, we'd like to donate $5,000 in, the, in your name to um, ITK. So um, thank you for taking the time um, to talk to us, updating you, updating us on, on you know, your, your progress and, and also kind of your experiences. So, um, thank you so yeah, much. absolutely. Um, yeah. So good luck in the, ne the next coming year. Um, appreciate your time and um, hope, uh, hope we can talk soon. For sure. For sure. Awesome. Thanks, Zach. Thank you. All right. Bye. bye.